Suarez has got a little rebuttal and say, oh, yeah, actually, I'm still I'm still top of the yeah. Hopefully not for Pelka's sake. But here we go. Game one opening up. Suarez versus Pelka. Now, before and we go into this, I just want to double check. This is best of five, yes? Best of five action. So here's where the pressure's really on for these players. They're sitting right here. Top 32 of winners. I'm so glad that both of these boys made it, but only one can advance further on into the bracket. And it's worth noting, Suarez has a little bit of a difficulty with finding Snake. He had lost the MVT at Frostbite, and there's not many Snakes back at home, so he's not able to practice often. But when it comes to Yoshi, he's very strong at theory crafting, figuring out what he can get away with, how he can play around certain characters' kits. And if there's one thing that you can afford to do with Snake, it's put the damage on, but you have to do so safely, because if there's any character in this cast that wants to go for trades blow for blow with you, it is the legendary mercenary himself. <laughs> And right now they're going into it. It's pretty much tied. Pelka doing a good job of navigating some of these disadvantage situations. It's kind of been a lot of airtime generated. It wasn't able to navigate out of that one. Suarez so with a big forwards match to open up an early lead. Let's see if Pelka's able to respond back. He's got a couple jabs, has him off stage. He's in kill range for sure against Snake. And you see him easy you now. What I really like about Pelka is sticks to the game plan. Doesn't let the moment get too much to him, although he's letting these up air strings get to him. What oh is my this? god. He still hasn't landed. So we're in there with a the counter. Time. That's gonna be killing. What? I've been watching Suarez lab that for like three weeks now. He's been hiding that for so long. All of a sudden he rips it out in filthy fashion, completely following wherever Pelka's trying to land. Yeah, it's like you're not an air fighter, Snake. Come on. <laughs> like how do you how do you fight that with Snake? You guys, there's nowhere to land, all that pressure. You hold the grenade and hope for the best, honestly. Yeah. But if there's one thing I have to say about Pelka that's been especially strong in his play as of late is that no matter the pressure, he remains unfettered. He will stick to his game plan. He will slow the game or quicken things up as he demands, no matter what. He's gotten so good at controlling his nerves, doing really well at being able to keep tight control of his grenade placement, of how he uses his C4, and just holding neutral in general to play. And he's gonna need all of that if Suarez is controlling the match as dominantly as he has. Yeah, there's just no rest for the Wicked, no rest for Pelka. That entire match is from three, two, one, go. Suarez like, all right, it's go time. He just hit the gas and did not let up. And, you know, let's just see if he still has enough in the tank to take out game two or Pelka has some adaptations against me. You see how far he went out for that forward out, forward air. Pelka's probably thinking, yeah, I'm safe. I might have a chance to get back. Oh, there's a Yoshi. <laughs> it's just crazy. Yoshi's rough, man. And taking a quick look over at the, uh, the pick band screen that we got, Thanks to that lovely house tech, we can see that Suarez wanted to get rid of Town and City and Yoshi's Brawl immediately. I think those are fantastic <laughs> bands. Must, must keep Yoshi's Brawl away from Snake, especially Snake like Helga. Otherwise, you have nowhere to land. You right. may as well throw the game. Because someone like him can control that in the blink of an eye. In fact, we're going to be running things back to Pokemon Stadium. Which yeah. Interesting pick overall from Pelka. You know, sometimes it's always interesting to see. There's players that always think when they make, when they lose big like that, they sometimes think, oh, maybe it was the character, maybe it was the stage. I always kind of respect the players that when they get beat big, they're like, no, it wasn't the stage that was the problem. It wasn't the character that was the problem. I was the problem. Let me make some adjustments. Let me dig deep and let me make it happen. And that's Pelka right now trying to do his best. But so far, not getting much mileage out of it, but sticking to the game plan. Grenades coming out, C4 coming out, and. Unfortunately for him, Suarez says, oh yeah, eggs are coming out. Yeah, well, one thing I just noticed, in fact, is that if Suarez throws the egg directly at the grenade, it pops and it clashes as though it's matching with another type of item. And if that's something that Suarez can pick up on and use on purpose, all of a sudden this is going to be a lot more difficult of a battle for Helga. But quick roll read, I'm going to catch it with the up tilt. And just like that, you see Helga starting to take the lead here, but he's still sitting at pretty heavy percentages. Right. But he's saying, you know, it's uh, the only thing you gotta kind of think is it's only a matter of time before the Suarez uh, hype train starts coming through. There it is, the up air pressure that we were seeing from game one, able to close out that stock and keep himself right in this game. Pelko was probably hoping to build on a little bit more of a percentage lead than he did, but I'm sure he'll take that he was in the lead at all right now, especially with how game one went. I actually love that wayward up smash that I just saw from Pelka because one of the things that Yoshi does best at, and I feel like both Suarez and Raptor showcase this perfectly, is how well he can approach from the air, how he has to make you worry about every aerial interaction. If you're going to check that with an explosion, how's Yoshi flying through the air? Uh, and Pelka very fortunate not to get the spike part of the forward air in that situation. 
And Pelka doing his best to get back to the stage. Tried to parry that jab, it looked like, and unfortunately ended up clipping him. And able to, oh, not able to get back. It's just, that's got to be so frustrating for Pelka. Every time he feels like he's got his way back from the from the edge guard situation, he's always in trouble. Stayed in that egg, took the damage. Unfortunate air dodge. I wonder if he mashed out of that into the up smash. The, the egg holds that, that input and it buffers that for whatever you do out. So if you wanted that air dodge, he, he dug his grave, man. Yeah, I gotta start rotating that smash, uh, the, not smash, the, uh, the analog stick and not hit any of the buttons for fear of doing something wrong. And what was once a, you know, a promising start for Pelka is kind of turning disastrous. So much damage already put on. Suarez kind of getting away with whatever he wants to and it's looking like trouble for Pelka. Might have, it looks like a little, bit, a little bit overwhelmed by the pressure that Suarez is able to put forward. Yeah, this battle in Game 2 is starting to take itself a little off the rails, but one thing I feel like Hulk is doing really good with is trying to take advantage of his more disjointed moves that are on Snake himself. We've seen a lot of back air up there whenever he's in disadvantage. He's even starting to poke away with up tilt, a move typically saved for the kills or more traditional tech reads. I actually really like this approach because you see oh, how often no, Suarez wants to press on him. The shield. My oh, man charged that for the longest time. <laughs> he wanted to make sure he was point. dead, dead. He just pretty much took the exclamation point right off the top of Snake's head and says, this is my uh, cap to the uh, to the set. And that's uh, that's game two. Oh, yeah, it's best of five. So sending down 0-2, definitely not where Pelko wanted to be. He you can see him is thinking. He's still alive, man. He's still got potentially one more game to turn this around. Yep. And even at that, this is still the winner's bracket. He's still able to stay alive, loser's side, but we talked about this earlier. That's a shark tank down there. Yeah. You don't want to be finding yourselves in losers that easily. So we got to see what Pelka can manage as we go into game three. He's definitely a veteran player, veteran poise. You see him just take a breath, lock back in, and the focus on his face. I would not be surprised if we see game four. Um, you know, that's kind of where it starts. You got to make your comeback one game at a time. Game three, he's got to win that, and maybe game four and game five can answer for or write itself. But already, Suarez picking up right where he left off and putting the pressure on. And Dude, game three has brought us to Smash I feel like this is a phenomenal pick for Pelka, just because he's going to be able to check a lot of that aerial pressure well by putting C4 and nades on the platform. And he just has to keep himself out of the air, I feel. This is where Suarez yeah. is getting so much damage. We need to get Pelka to just before he exits out of the game. What's the airtime been on Snake in this one? It's been probably more airtime than ground time in this match in particular. And kind of the previous matches too, Suarez is doing such a good job putting on so much pressure. And they're right back into it overall, and Pelka just got to figure out a way to take the stock. You don't want to be down and taking damage on your, you know, and match point pretty much overall for for Suarez. He's doing such a good job. Oh my God, reverse! He's getting flashy. Yeah, he, he loves those. But I've learned with the um, with the egg lay and then tech chasing with it sometimes. The way that he can pressure an opponent with egg lay is fantastic. Not a lot of characters have a command grab that they can really take advantage of. And hey, anyway, at the end of the day, it's nothing to write home about. But yeah. Suarez puts it to really good use. Speaking of good use, nades are flying left and right. Pelka's starting to bring back game three. Got a bit of percentage on him, but if you try to crack it up quickly on Suarez, this still isn't out of the realm of possibility for him. Yeah, he's just got to get some grenade trades. That's where it starts. He's back on the ground. Uh, maybe an unfortunate down there. Lucky to get away with that. And he's doing his best. Oh, no, the grenade, the grenade hits himself. And he's in big trouble off stage, and this is not where he wants to be. Very good air dodge back, but Suarez is feeding you know, any of the ledge options. Kind of has a pretty good read on what Pelko wants to do to try to guard uh, guard break scenarios. And just not able to recover. Did not land that whole exchange. You know, people are getting hype over here for uh, the Yoshi. I'm hoping my boy Pelka is able to make some sort of adaptation. Got to stay on the ground. Got to get grounded against Yoshi. Unfortunately, he's not able to do so. He's, if he's not been in the air, he's been on that central top platform the entire time. Yeah, I mean, like, just as good of a stage as it can be for Snake, it's also a fairly good stage for Yoshi as well. He's able to control it in dominant fashion in the previous iterations of Smash. And while the platform may not be moving in our current rule set, it is still a very easy stage to control for Yoshi. But we cannot count Pelka out just yet. 45% of the grand scheme things, not a lot on him. So Ars is gonna have to really make those numbers count if he wants to end this out before Pelka can turn this match around. Yeah, he's doing a very good job of trying to just keep himself within striking distance. Oh man, a very good ballsy back here. You know, that was one of those situations where if that up air hit, he might have been, been out of the set. 
completely out of there. Eggler's coming out. That, oh, he had a grenade. That was so much damage. Yeah, talking about Michael Bay effects out here. We see the Shy 2 quick stand up from Suarez. Gets himself out of there with a very clean 3 0. I, I hate to see it happen when it's two of your friends, but I got to root for the home team, yeah. man. Both Mayosis taking those great wins.